There are delegates and exhibitors at this event from all over the world. It really is the arms industry's shop window on that world. But as I've been finding out, it's the British firms that really take centre stage. This event is largely about sales to overseas and delegations from dozens of countries are here with the UK government doing its utmost to get them to buy British. But that's controversial with protesters outside clamouring against the arms trade. An argument dismissed by the government. Later this week, I will chair the first meeting of a new Cross Whitehall ministerial working group on defence and security exports. This is not about picking winners or nor old-fashioned protectionism. It is about playing to our strengths for the good of defence and to support economic growth. This government is not ashamed of British companies' successes or of promoting responsible defence exports. Industry figures looked on as he announced the first big money deal of this year's event. Following the completion of the assessment phase, I am able to announce today the award of a new £250 million contract for the manufacture of the new Sea Scepter missile in the UK by MBDA. The system replaces Sea Wolf in protecting frigates against missile attack. The supplier says this deal will sustain 500 UK jobs. As well as the big impressive systems on display here, there are all sorts of niche gadgets for want of a better word. Many of them of course developed for the British Armed Forces. My colleague Laura Hawkins has been to see one that introduces the humble infantry soldier to the high-tech world of Top Gun. For a soldier to be on the battlefield and have his communications, control and command instructions laid over the real world right in front of his eyes might sound too good to be true. But that's what this new gadget's all about. It's called the Q-Warrior. There's a lot of data, a lot of information now in the digital battle space. The soldier needs that information, but we want to give it to him heads up, eyes out, so he can very quickly access and digest that information rather than have to go look for it. And it also introduces free space tracking. So it knows where the soldier is in the field and it can calculate where he's looking and then you can provide him with geo-reference symbology or uh, video imagery um, to enhance his view of the outside world. Both the armed forces and civilians have been drawn to test out the latest see-through display. Although BAE systems have been creating similar products for pilots since 1958, this is the first that's actually dismounted and can be used by soldiers in the field. One of the key capabilities that this can give you is the navigation function. So rather than having to go heads down on a PDA or a hard map and understand where your rally point is, this can tell you in 3D space augmented reality where that rally point is. So as you look around, it'll put a green spot on that rally point and it'll just take you there. You don't have to go heads down, you can stay heads up, eyes out, finger on trigger all the time. Yeah, it was interesting. It's the uh, situational awareness that it really improves. So knowing who's where uh, and what they're looking at. It, it would potentially make a real difference. It's, um, it's all just shapes through a knife piece at the moment, so it's nothing overly technical, but it, um, it's a really good idea of showing where things are on the ground. Uh, I thought it was a really, really interesting concept. Uh, I think a little way to go for the infantryman. It's still big and bulky and some problems, but yeah, overall a brilliant concept. I think next year hopefully we'll, we'll, see, we'll see some uh, advantages to our guys on the ground. A common question is whether power source and communications to feed the Q-Warrior would be stored. The answer is within and around the body armour. Now one of the biggest benefits to the soldier on the ground with this piece of kit is that it can quickly identify different forces. So if I turn my head to the left, I can see blue force tracking, which are friendly forces. If I turn my head to the right, I can see a red diamond, and that means the enemy are there. After some modifications, they'll now be trialling it out for a second time, and it's hoped that in the future it will be an integral piece of equipment for the armed forces. Laura Hawkins, Forces News, London. Well, this event, as I say, is really vast in its scope. There are all sorts of companies here. I'm joined by uh, retired group captain Al Lockwood, uh, spokesman for the organisers. Al, why does the state of the defence industry matter to the UK armed forces? To the UK Armed Forces enormously because uh, a healthy defence industry means that we are reliant on our own defence industry for our equipment. And as you know, the, def uh, the UK defence industry has many cutting edge technology uh, within it, uh, which provides our forces with the very best of equipment. Now, a lot of that equipment is, of course, on display here today. Um, 
not all a bit popular with the protesters outside. They would argue that some of the equipment being displayed here, or at least some of the companies involved in this exhibition, are involved in human rights abuses. Their equipment is used for human rights abuses around the world. What do you make of that argument? Uh, I think it's uh, completely wrong. Actually, we have a very, very strict uh, compliance law when it comes to equipment being shown here. Uh, things such as they give us examples of human rights abuses, that equipment is not allowed here. We have very strict controls. Anything that's illegal, either in international or UK law, is not allowed to be shown. And we work very hard with the, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs to ensure that everything here is legal and good defence and security equipment. Now, looking around us here on the edge of the UK pavilion, what really strikes me is the number of small and medium-sized businesses that are exhibiting. Obviously, the, the Leviathans, your General Dynamics or BAE systems are here too. There really are a lot of small businesses here. Why does that matter? Why are they so important to the defence industry and indeed this exhibition as a whole? I think the UK can pride itself on its small and medium-sized enterprises. They have the cutting-edge technology and the innovation that provide the defence industry with all those small pieces that go into all our major defence equipment. Uh, here at DSCI, gives them the opportunity to link with all the organisations and the major manufacturers in the UK and overseas to provide equipment. It's a great marketplace for them and we give them every support. And 40% of the companies here are UK small and medium enterprises, providing everything from clothing to high technology. Now, you describe this as a marketplace, and it is always impressive to park an armoured vehicle more or less anywhere, but certainly in an exhibition like this. Does it actually make a difference, though? Is genuine business done here? Yeah, business is done, but it really is a, a venue, and it's the largest exhibition of its kind in the world. It's a venue where people from all over the world companies, businessmen can talk to each other and do those collaborative projects which make you know, the defence and security industry such an exciting place. Al Lockwood, thank you very much. Well, we're back here at DSEI tomorrow with something of a maritime theme. I've been invited on board some of the visiting warships for a look at the naval technology they're here to highlight.